Well, hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. I just want to take a few minutes to answer some questions. Uh, we've got Robert in Dallas, Oregon, who has a problem with his furnace, and uh, he's reached out to us to ask if we can offer some assistance. So here's Robert's question. Um, he's trying to fix his furnace. The fan blows, okay? Um, he can smell the gas. All right, so those are two important things. So stop right there. That's just the first sentence. The fact that the fan is blowing, we know that the furnace is communicating with the thermostat. When the thermostat calls for heat, the very first thing that it's going to do is start the fan. Before it's even evaluating sales switches or high temperature switches or anything like that, it's going to start that fan. Okay. Once the fan starts, the control board is now looking for a change of state in that sales switch. Okay, so right there we know that. Now the next thing he stated is that he smells gas. So if he smells gas, I'm going to say that it's been about maybe 18 seconds from the time the fan started. Okay, so that's the pre-purge cycle. And if it's been about 18, 20 seconds or so and he smells the gas, we should not smell gas for the first 15, 18 seconds, but he smells the gas. That's telling us that we're good on our sales switch and that we're good on our high temperature switch and the thermostat is still calling for heat. If we did not smell gas, then that would be an indication that maybe there's a problem with what I have always called the blue circuit, the circuit upstream, where it goes through a daisy chain circuit of sales switch, the thermostat calls for heat, it goes to the sales switch, goes to the high temperature thermostat, onto the heat exchanger of the furnace, and then he makes it back to the board, okay? So we are assuming that that blue daisy chain, it, it, it changes colors, it could be white or black wire, but when they leave the furnace, they leave on blue wires. So I always call it the blue circuit. On all my videos, you'll hear me refer to it as a blue circuit. So on his first sentence here, I'm trying to fix my furnace. The fan blows, I can smell gas, but I'm not hearing clicking, okay? The clicking sound is going to be the gas solenoids engaging, okay? So it's interesting that you're, you're, you're not hearing the clicking, but you're smelling the gas, okay? So what I'm thinking you're saying in your statement, even though you say you're not hearing the clicking, I'm thinking maybe you're saying you're not hearing the ticking sound, which is a tick, 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 tick. Okay, so let's just keep going here. Uh, you wanna check the igniter, but can't get to the exhaust tube out and the solenoid assembly looking for ideas on how to get this out. Okay, so um, you have a, um, an, 80, an Atwood 8535 furnace, okay? So I don't have one of those in my little show and tell pile, but I do have an Atwood uh, 8525. So it's a little bit, it's, it's 10,000 B2 smaller than yours, but they're gonna work the same. It's just a larger heat exchanger, okay? And it'll consume more LP. On that note where you have the, the 25,000 BTU, the 35, that has to do with the amount of BTUs going on the input port, not how much is actually generating in heat. Um, so your first question, you are, let me, I'm, I want to make sure I'm doing you service by answering your question as best as I can. So you're, you're, you're smelling gas, but you're not hearing the ticking sound, okay? So if you're not hearing the ticking sound, there's something you could do before you try to gain access to your burner, okay? And what I think I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to bring you a little bit closer here, and I'll show you some things that you can do on your furnace before you take the burner out to see if it's, in fact, the igniter, okay? So let me move you over here a little bit closer. All right, here we go. Okay, so um, if you're having that situation where you're hearing the gas solenoid engage, the click, you smell the LP, actually you're smelling ethyl mercaptan, that's that rotten egg smell, you're smelling that, but you're not hearing the ticky tick 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 sound, okay? You're, on, on these furnaces, you're, this is your board, it's going to be slid in on the side here, okay? So you're going to take usually a wing nut right here, and then this comes off, it's usually attached to a little black plastic um, return vent. This is where the air comes back from your coach. Um, so you've got to be very careful when you do this, but it's a quick little go, no go test. So this big wire is your electrode wire. Sometimes they're going to be a little bit thinner with a red wire, but usually we see them at these big orange spark plug sized wires. And you're going to find that wire connected to this electrode pod. Okay. So that's this, this big thing right here. Okay. So for testing purposes, what you can do take that off, get some insulated pliers. And um, when you're starting your furnace, just hold this a little bit close to it. And uh, when you hear, when you smell the gas, you should also see a spark jumping from this post to this wire, okay? Um, so you should see a spark jumping there. If you see the spark, then we know that your board is probably gonna be okay because it's actually sending the spark through the wire to the electrode. Okay, so that's what, something I'll do just as a quick go, no, go before I go and take the, the, 
the burner out, okay? Is the board even giving me a spark? Okay, if, the, if I'm not getting a spark at this point, then there's a good chance that it's the board that's bad, okay? Um, but if I'm holding it right there and I can see a spark, um, then it's, you, you can assume your board is good. Now your board might still be bad. Um, you haven't tested it to see if the, the circuit will maintain itself, but at this point you're just testing to see Am I getting a spark out of my board, which is going to go to my electrode? Okay, so that's the first thing I wanted to show you is a go no go. Now, I would say use insulated pliers. Be very careful. Uh, you enter with caution. Don't electrocute yourself, and if you do, don't blame it on Darren because you saw something on the internet. Um, you got to be careful with this. Uh, this is I don't know how many volts it is. I don't keep that in my brain. It's something you could look up, but I have gotten shocked by these before because I went, all right, let me just unplug it, and the thing went off, and it's it, it's quite a jolt okay so that's why i say get some pliers with some rubber handles and keep away from it all right uh, so let's move this over now your next question was you're having a hard time getting your your uh, burner out so let me show you how i sometimes get those stubborn ones out this is not a commercial or anything but i will make a link to this product i have used this for years it's great as seen on tv apparently people have been using it since 1957 i wasn't even born in 1957 but um this is a really great product i don't make any commissions on anything but i've used this a lot and so you're going to get in there and you're going to let this soak in and uh, in fact interestingly enough when i grabbed this furnace i couldn't get this out either now luckily i can stand this up on end um and I'm gonna be doing that in a minute when we show you how to get into here. So I stood this up on in and I squirted on there and I guess I let it sit for about 10, 15 minutes. And then I took some uh, channel locks and wiggle, 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 and I was able to get this to come right out. Okay, so, so your mileage may vary, but here's some rust spots. You can see where the rust was really uh, embedded into this thing and it was fighting it. But that product does a really good job breaking through that and helping to get that out. So that's a tip I can share. Now, even if you can't get this out, so here, let me, the next thing I wanna do to answer your question and finish this up is show you how to get to the gas burner. You had mentioned in your comment about taking the gas on and off and um, let me kind of clarify that a little bit. So let me reposition the camera again. Okay, so I feel like I'm on a cooking show because I moved my camera above us looking down. And um, so here's how you sear your shrimp. <laughs> okay, so um, now again, I was saying I cheated because I put this in this up orientation and I took some of this product and I squirted all around that collar down there. And that wiggle, wiggle, wiggle allowed me to get this thing out. Okay, now I want to show you, for you, if, if you're able to see this, then I'm going to assume that on your RV, you have an access cover on the outside. If you can't see this, then you would have had to have pulled your furnace out to see this, and all they're going to give you is just this covering here with a little hole on the side of your RV. So the fact that you can see this tells me you probably have an access panel on the outside, and if you do, that's fantastic. I love when they do that. Um, now, what I want you to look at, so get that off. If you look down in here, you're going to see these, uh, let me get something to point with. Uh, here, I'll get a little plastic pointing piece. Okay. I think it's three or four little screws. So I've got, I've got my plastic putty knife on one of them right there. Here's another one. So this one looks like it's got four screws. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take those off. Okay, one, two, there's two. Uh, there's gonna be one right here. Yep. Okay. Okay, and then four. You might have Phillips screws. Okay, now we're also gonna unplug that. And a lot of times, let me get some small uh, little Okay, we're going to take this off. Now, you guys have seen me do this on a lot of my other videos, what I'm doing right here. Okay, so, but since Robert in Oregon has this question, it's an opportunity for us to do it again. Boy, that one's really stubborn, isn't it? Why is he being so stubborn? There we go. Okay, that's one of his little uh, strain reliefs. And we're going to pull this, give us some slack. So we've given us some slack on the electrode wire. We've, we've fought to take this out, but let me just say something. Let's say that I couldn't get this out for some reason. Um, yeah, you're gonna have to get this out. Um, I've actually cut them before. So you've taken this out 
the exhaust port, you've taken your screws out and then this whole thing just slides on out, okay? And then there we have our burner and our electrode gaps, okay? So you can see the electrode gaps there. Um, they look pretty good. The burner even looks relatively okay. These are really old, old furnaces. They've been in the industry for quite a while. Um, some of them, you're going to have a hard time finding this part right here. They, they, from what I've heard, um, they would rather not sell parts for these furnaces anymore because at this age of the furnace, the heat exchangers are starting to crack. And I've done a video where we found a cracked heat exchanger. And so I'm thinking that just to keep everybody safe, they're actually from, this is what I've heard, they're destroying the machines that make this so that you cannot get them anymore. And what that does is it's forcing you to upgrade your furnace. So if you have an old furnace like this, if it's an old Atwood, especially an 85 um, model series furnace, those are relatively old. They've been out for dozens and dozens of years. And um, they would just as soon stop selling you parts to fix it and then just have you buy a new furnace. So they just want to keep everybody safe. They're not trying to be evil or mean. But basically, these four screws is how this comes out is what I wanted to share with you. So you'll, I, uh, when I was reading your question, Robert, you were talking about having to take the solenoid off. You really don't take the solenoid off. You just take these four screws off here, and here's your little plate right there. Okay, and then you look in there and um, what you're looking for is about an eighth of an inch gap right here between the two prongs and also underneath the burner head here. And um, the other thing you can do, now I do have a video of me doing this. So let me find my control board here. So with this loose, you can take, remember this friend over here, this little board? You can plug everything back in the way it's supposed to be. Now this cord will fit over, it's just going to be out of the shot. And you can try to start your furnace that way. And then these little electrical things you should see, you should see little lightning bolts right here. Okay. If you do not. So remember the first test I had you do where you hold this all a little off and uh, you're looking for a little bit of a spark. Well, what you're doing is if it's sparking here, it's also should be sparking here. But if it's sparking here, but it's not sparking here, then I want you to feel this electrode that goes into the ceramic and see if that's loose. Uh, I've done a video where we found the electrode loose inside the ceramic. So I want you to feel that to make sure that's tight. Um, it's also supposed to be plugged in on the backside here as well. Um, now, I do believe you can still get the electrodes, but I think on some of these models, you cannot get the burner head anymore. Um, there are some, uh, I, I, there's people that have bought them on Amazon, and what I would ask you to do is when you take this off, uh, since we've come so far and it's only two screws, let me do this for you guys. Again, I've got videos, just look at my furnace playlist, and you can hang out and watch these videos and videos and videos. But if you look inside of there, where's everybody? You see that there's a lot more than just this. There's a bunch of stuff going on inside of there. You see that little lance in there with a little throat and a little groove? There's a lot more in here. And so it has to do with the size of these holes and what's going on inside and the distance between this little piece right here. So if you were to need to get one of these burner heads because it's got a hole burned in it, which is typically the thing we find, um, and you just go buy one and it says, oh yes, it's compatible with this. Well, as I've said many times in my videos, it's not enough just to know the model number. You need to know the model number and the serial number because there's been some, the model number 8525, that's been around since the 80s, okay? But the serial number may have changed. And over the time, I know the serial number, they've changed some of their um, high temperature thermostats. They've changed the sail switch design and they've changed some of these as well. So if you get a new burner, you need to make sure, take your old one out and make sure that all the holes are the same diameter. Look inside of it to make sure that that's good in there as well. And that would be a good eyeball check to make sure it's going to work for you. All right. So Robert, I hope that helped in uh, Oregon. And um, so if that helps you guys out, you give us a thumb up. I'm going to put all my toys back together and um, maybe call it a night. So Anyway, but I do want to share with you guys and so into you guys um, things I've learned from the trail. So if this was helpful, give us a thumb up, subscribe to our channel, and um, send your questions. And if you do, it's kind of fun to know where you guys are coming from. So um, this is Darren, Joyce Washington, signing off. Thanks for watching.